Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a certified galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. And in today's video, we are going to be exploring the Libra lunar eclipse on March 24th, 25th, 2024. Thank you so much for being together with me in this video right here, right now. Before we dive in to all the astrology, I would like to invite you to the upcoming Airy Solar Eclipse Distant Reiki Share. It is occurring during the solar eclipse, April 8th at 8 a.m. Hawaii time. So if you're not actually going out and seeing it and you want to be at the Reiki Share, please come. We will talk astrology and we will also do a Reiki journey, set intentions together for the cycle ahead. It's always such a powerful gathering that really just warms my heart and fills me with so much love. And everyone who comes is really sacred soul family. So if you want to be there, please come. I'd love to have you there. I'm also teaching two Reiki trainings in the end of March and early April. So if you're wanting to learn Reiki, definitely also check out my website. And on April 20th, I'm teaching this awesome class that combines galactic astrology and Reiki. And this is on the day of one of the biggest transits of the year, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus. You can learn more about that class on my website also, taylornorrisreiki.com. It is really about co-creating heaven on earth, expanding our consciousness, and inviting in the higher frequencies of big breakthroughs that are available at this time needed at this time within our individual consciousness and within the collective consciousness where humanity is at on the whole. So if you're interested, I hope you will join me there. It's always a sacred circle and I've received really positive feedback from the classes that combine the galactic astrology with the Reiki so far. So come and join. Okay, diving into the Libra lunar eclipse, the first thing I want to show you is visually what is this eclipse? What is happening? It's a penumbral lunar eclipse. What does that actually mean and look like? So I'm going to take you to a, a website and we're going to see what that looks like. Okay, so the penumbral lunar eclipse on March 24th, 25th, depending on where you are in the world, will look something like this. You can see the Earth's penumbra, the shadow, the subtler shadow is eclipsing the moon. And you can see this inner line here is the Earth's umbra, which does not eclipse the moon. And the Earth's penumbra doesn't actually eclipse the entire moon either. It leaves a little sliver up in this portion of the moon. So this is a subtler eclipse. Thank you very much. <laughs> Still powerful energetically, but it's not involving that deep dark earth shadow of the umbra. It's just the shadow of the penumbra. And again, it's not eclipsing the entire moon here. So in terms of the path of the eclipse, you can see it is this area here that's shaded in purple. And it shows the moon traveling across that area and the eclipse occurring here. So this is the region where the eclipse is visible. You can also see down here when the eclipse is occurring exactly. So the maximum eclipse is occurring at March 25th, 3.12 a.m. in Boston. So that's Eastern time or 7.12 a.m. Universal time. And you can plug in your time zone and your location and see when the maximum eclipse will be occurring. All right, so diving into the astrology here, you can see 
that this lunar eclipse, it is a big full moon in the zodiac sign of Libra. So the sun is here in the sign of Aries. The moon is here in the sign of Libra. The nodes of the moon, the south node of the moon is in the sign of Libra. The north node of the moon in the sign of Aries. And this is what is activating the fact that it's an eclipse is because the sun and moon are within, you can see about 10 degrees orb of the nodes of the moon. And so this is a powerful time. This is a time of endings and beginnings, completions and fresh starts. It's a south node of the moon eclipse because it is a lunar eclipse with the moon and the moon is conjuncting the south node of the moon. The south node of the moon having to do with our past, past lives, beliefs, outdated belief systems, structures, outdated and unconscious manifestations of the zodiac sign, Libra, people pleasing, codependency. I don't know who I am because I'm so focused on who you are and trying to serve you and please you. These are some of the lower expressions of Libra, being a doormat, being somebody who just has no boundaries and lets everybody walk over them and and, and just is so amorphous, like blending in, oh, I can be kind of whoever you need me to be. And I don't really know who I am because I'm not taking the time to do that because I'm afraid because I want to please you and I'm very insecure inside. So I'm needing, you know, to please you in order to feel some kind of security about who I am inside. So this is the conflict of Libra. It's so other focus, whereas Aries is clear sense of self. Here I am. This is me. I have arrived. Libra is that opposite energy. And really the invitation here is to find that balance between the clear sense of self, right? Aries, I am, I know myself, I'm just going for it. And Libra, which higher expressions are peace and harmony, grace, beauty, the aesthetics, the arts, justice, you know, being in right relationship with one another. So finding balance here where you know who you are when you meet the other, when you interact with the other, and you can be in that centered space where you're not, you know, completely in the individuated sense of like myopic vision of everything just works, you know, my way, the tunnel vision, no care for others. Aries ruled by Mars can be divine masculine, like violent, aggressive, like too much, right? Big ego, right? Like taking up so much space, right? And this is encouragement here to find that middle ground here of taking up your space, being in your sovereignty, Aries, and being also respectful of others rather than like combative of others or completely avoiding the challenge of being oneself, the opportunity to be oneself, express oneself, have needs and desires, Aries, and express them and go after them and get what you want, receive what you want here. So Libra is about talking it out. It's like finding the win-win solution, finding solutions where everyone benefits the highest good of all and finding fairness as well. And really having like a clear third eye, a clear crown, a clear mind. Libra is an air sign. So it is a mental sign and it's also a social sign. So all manner of one-on-one -on -one relationships being highlighted at this time. And the eclipse is really setting the tone, setting the energy it has like a portal, a window of influence for the next six months until our next round of eclipses, which begin in September. So very relationship-oriented eclipse. 
Now, on the other side here, we have the sun in Aries that is still in its conjunction with Neptune. Okay, it's on the Aries side, so this is a bit more individuated, but it's been spiritualized. It's a spiritually informed individuation. So knowing thyself, channeling, channeling higher truth, feeling your sense of connectedness to all that is, seeing clearly who you are in the context of the greater whole and seeing that your individuated consciousness is part of that larger whole, that they are one in the same. You are part of everything that is from the microcosmic scale, from the tiniest scale to the largest scale, that you are connected in a scalar relationship. This is also talking about your relationship to the cosmos, your relationship to the universe, your relationship to the divine. I've been watching a lot of physics videos, a lot of Nassim Harriman, and I think this is really a lot of what we're remembering here is the true nature of ourselves in relation to the true nature of the universe, the cosmos, and all that is, and how science is showing what we know spiritually and in more esoteric traditions to be very much the actual underpinnings of our experience of reality, our experience of the material world, the physical world, our experience of life and what this is all about and what we are having to do together to evolve in a conscious way, in a harmonious way, in a way that's bringing in, inviting in greater sense of peace here. We also have, we have strong fire energy here, the sun in Aries, the north node in Aries, Chiron in Aries, the node in Chiron being very close together here, Chiron and Mercury also being very close together. So this has an element here of mental transformation, creative, passionate ideas, having that clear sense of self that is connected, healing that sense of self in a way that is more connected. Because if we look at where is the ruler of all this Aries energy? Well, the ruler of Aries is Mars. And where is Mars? Mars is in Pisces. So Mars is connected to the oneness, the pure consciousness, the all that is Pisces, the unity and unification, the divine order of everything. So this is a very spiritually motivated, spiritually directed Mars here. And Mars is not the only planet that's in Pisces. We have Saturn still in Pisces, Venus in Pisces, Neptune in Pisces, which I mentioned here. So we have very strong water energy as well in this chart. We have strong earth energy here in this chart, Jupiter nearing its conjunction to Uranus in the sign of Taurus fixed earth doesn't get any more earthy than Taurus earthy and stable but Uranus and Taurus is not about stability no it is not we also have the strong air element here with Pluto and Aquarius and the moon in the south node of the moon in Libra also air signs so all of our elements really strongly represented here so there is this strong elemental coherence quality, coherence opportunity within this lunar eclipse, inviting in the coherence of all the elements of your body from a physical, atomic, plunk, you know, molecular level, proton level level really tiny level and the coherence of you know the waveform the ripple the flow of your consciousness manifesting through these elemental expressions within your earth human life within more of your multi-dimensional self across 
the solar system, the Milky Way galaxy, beyond the Milky Way galaxy as well. All the billions of galaxies within our universe and then even, you know, opening your conscious mind to the possibility of versions of you in other universes as well who you are in coherence with and in quantum entanglement with and can receive divine healing messages, Mercury conjunct Chiron and the North Node of the Moon. This is like pulling the thread and the entanglement, entangling with the future self, entangling with higher, more evolved, you know, future timelines of yourself in other realities and other galaxies, star systems, universes, dimensions, bringing them all back in here. Wow. To sweeten the deal, there's also another aspect I want to share about, which is this yod with Venus and Jupiter to the south node. And where we see that in the chart is here, Venus at 16 degrees, 33 minutes of Pisces it's in a sextile. So there's a blue line between Venus really conjunct Saturn. So Saturn is pretty much in the picture as well. Saturn and Venus sextile 60 degree harmonious flow of energy to Jupiter and Taurus. Jupiter nearing its conjunction with Uranus. Uranus is pretty much in this picture of this yacht as well. Jupiter Uranus, Venus, Saturn have these green dotted lines here to the south node of the moon in Libra. The green dotted lines are quincunx aspects. These are aspects of an adjustment that make a yod, that make an aspect called a finger of God. So you can imagine the picture, you know, on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel with Adam's finger and God's finger touching one another, right? And the very anthropomorphized version of the God concept, the religious God concept, which science, you know, in its wounding, in its trauma was like, we need a paradigm where that is not the reality. And so they forgot to kind of include consciousness and divine order and you know relying on assumptions such as everything just being random and coincidence when there can be a higher order that is not coming from an anthropomorphized you know god figure right there can be a divine order here so this finger of god pointing to the south node of the moon in libra this has an energy of big letting goes endings, relationship changes, also really tuning into this Venus because this south node of the moon is ruled by this Venus. And we're going to get into the galactic alignments of Venus more deeply in just a moment now. So a lot going on in this chart. I'm just giving you a, an overview here. Certainly not an exhaustive reading of everything, but that is some of what is really, really highlighting in this chart so far. So the Sabian symbol for the moon is Libra, six degrees. A man watches his ideals taking a concrete form before his inner vision. Keynote, the need to visualize clearly one's dreams or ideals in order to make them truly effectual. According to a French proverb, what is well conceived can easily be formulated. The process of interior visualization can be quite essential, except in the case of a creative individual who has become a totally pure channel for the descent of spiritual power and a clear lens through which the archetype in the mind of man or God can be projected without distortion wherever needed. In other cases, the creative act is less direct. A man projects into the world what he has seen reflected on the screen of his individualized consciousness. This is the first stage of the 38th bifold sequence of symbolized phases in the process of individualized existence. It is a phase of interior formulation in preparation for a creative projection of one's ideals or concepts. This interpretation comes from Dane Roger 
mindfire.ca, you can see the Sabian symbol interpretations for every single degree of the zodiac. Highly recommend going down that rabbit hole. So I read this entire Sabian symbol because I think it's so profound and you can really sit with it and be with it and read it and meditate on it for quite some time here. But really, this is about manifestation. This is about visualization. This is about dreaming into reality. This is about, and I think if you're watching this video, you are someone who is on a path of awakening this potential that Dane Roger talks about, a creative individual who has become a totally pure channel for the descent of spiritual power and a clear lens through which the archetype in the mind of man or God can be projected without distortion wherever needed. Those of us on a healing path, on a spiritual path, this is pretty much like the target. This is what the finger of God is pointing to. It's like, this is the goal to be that level of a pure channel. And it's not even to to become that. It's it's like you are that. That is your true nature. The healing work is releasing the layers, the thought forms, the beliefs, the attitudes, the injuries, the wounds, the traumas, all the density, all the heaviness, all the bird conditioning programming that obstructs that reality of what you really are, which is that clear channel of the flow of pure consciousness of this creative life force energy, which animates literally everything we perceive within reality. So what are we letting go of this lunar eclipse? I think it's it's more of any kind of obscuration or block to this pure potential that is contained within this Libra 6 Sabian symbol. So more to let go of, more to release so that we can be fully embodied and perceiving and in touch with and in full access of our true nature as that level of a clear channel of creation and life force energy. Because we each are this. It's my belief that this is very much the inner technology of the human vehicle. This is the possibility we're walking into with Jupiter conjunct Uranus and Taurus and Pluto and Aquarius and what all these transits, all of our planets and stars are really helping us remember and awaken and embody. The Sabian symbol for the sun is Aries 6, a square with one of its sides brightly illumined. The emotional desire for concrete and stabilized existence as a person. So I'm not going to read this paragraph, but you can pause the video and read it. I'm just going to skip down to the summary here, a one-sided urge for inner stability. So in becoming this clear channel, right, <laughs> experiencing more expanded states of consciousness, transcending the limited ego identity, singular sense of self that views itself as separate, this can be a bit destabilizing, <laughs> to say the least, a bit disorienting in this world of form and material reality and physicality and all of this, right? Like we need egos to function and like go to the market and get food or grow the food and harvest the food and like remember to eat and drink and <laughs> go to the bathroom, day showers and pick the kids up from school and, you know, do whatever the things are, right? So it can be very disorienting in this process of maybe becoming that level of channel and that level of translucence of the ego identity. 
So there is this need, this balance here for inner stability. And I think this is in large part what we're all craving in this world of so much change and instability and uncertainty and the unknown and this evolutionary directive to be going into uncharted territory, which is what Aries is all about. So how do we go into uncharted territory and still feel some sense of stability and security? Well, through cultivating a sense of inner stability within ourselves, trust in the oneness, trust in ourselves, trust in the universe, trust in our connection, trust in our community, our soul family, our connection to the earth as well. Remember earth as ally, as mother, as the coordinates of space-time where we're at right now as earth travels through space, right, and does her spiral dance around the sun. And as the sun does its spiral dance around possibly in orbit with Sirius and Alcyone of the Pleiades and orbiting around the Milky Way galaxy. So find that inner stability within. It's an inside job and it's absolutely essential. So here we have the galactic charts for this particular Libra lunar eclipse. You can make a chart like this, galacticastrochart.com. This chart shows the conjunct and opposite alignments with the constellations and the fixed stars to the various planets and points in the chart. So you can see in this chart, the sun and moon are in alignment with the supergalactic center. So this is a big black hole. There's the galactic center at the center of the Milky Way galaxy, the supergalactic center, which is at the center of where the Milky Way galaxy and 30 or so other galaxy, it's organizing, the supergalactic center is organizing our galaxy and 30 or so other similar galaxy so within the universe huge area of space so we have this element of the super galactic center the black hole what is a black hole this is a great question for this lunar eclipse the journey that i channeled for the pisces new moon is a journey to the super galactic center and ski out star pegasus constellation so that is a wonderfully supportive journey also to do for this lunar eclipse if you feel guided to do so a great question to ask is what is the true nature of a black hole are we living inside of a black hole are you a black hole <laughs> is the earth a black hole is, are the stars black holes what is a black like what does that mean to be a black hole and to feel it have a sensory experience of the black hole. This is also the channel of pure consciousness that we were just talking about. The channel of pure consciousness and also, okay, what are those obstructions to being a channel of pure consciousness? Ancestral healing. A lot of ancestral healing here. A lot of the past evolutionary themes, letting go of those, receiving the final learnings, messages, guidance, teachings, blessings from those and letting them go and also okay so it's not just the re releasing it's the revealing empowering and connecting to the galactic ancestors seeing ourselves as a part of all the star systems that we can perceive and star systems we can't even see with our telescopes we are a part of those as well, they are a part of us. They're contained within every little tiny bit of information within us as well. So this is immensely supportive. We have many other galactic energies here. Alpharat, Star and Andromeda with the nodes talking about speed, talking about freedom. I journeyed to the star recently and it was talking about also the inner child. The inner child knows the beauty of being a creative, pure 
clear channel. So this can be very deeply healing of the inner child, bringing the inner child forth who knows this truth and knows this reality and, and may know a lot more about the secrets of the universe and the nature of reality than the conditioned adult self. And so having some dialogue between those parts of self could be very, very fruitful. And if you're guided to journey to Alpharats, having that inner child healing and maybe connecting with beings who bring that part out in you also. Mercury aligned to speak a star in Virgo constellation, Arcturus star in Boots constellation. This is the A team of spirit guides, divine feminine spirit guides coming through speak a divine and sacred knowledge, very relevant to the earth. Arcturians, all about adventure, exploration, enlightened group consciousness. Also, the pure consciousness healing energy. There can be downloads, there can be healing energy coming through the crown chakra that is available at this time. So, very, very helpful here. Venus conjunct at Chernar Star and Eridanus. We're going to go into that in depth in just a moment. Mars conjunct Royal Star Fomalhaut and Piscis Austrinus. So, not only is Mars and Pisces like personal will unified with spiritual will, divine will, higher will, but with this conjunct alignment to FOMO help, it's like extra, extra, extra. So it is inviting you to dream and be in the space of your insights, your mysticism, your inner experience, your oneness, your unity, connected to Archangel Gabriel, connected to receiving the sacred waters of Aquarius constellation, that information, the fluid of creation, the fluid nature of space, memory, of gravity, of these forces, of the natural laws. There could be a lot of divine information coming through the body, really being activated with Mars and your own will and your own ego, like really receiving that next level of healing as well. A recent journey to Fomalhaut revealed like a stargate portal between Fomalhaut and Regulus. And so Fomalhaut, you know, one of the shadow expressions is wanting to like just be in the non-physical. I mean, I can completely relate to <laughs> this and I know many of you watching this too it's like oh you know just leave me in a, in the journey like I'll just stay there in the other realm or in the quantum field right FOMO can like lift off from the ground and not come back and it's like well you're here you have a body you're living a life on earth you need to come back and what do you need to come back with? Your divine inspiration, Regulus, Royal Star Regulus and Leo. This is connected to the galactic animal kingdom, to the fairy tale realms, to, you know, the talk about inner child and magic and mystery and wonder and awe. Receiving all of this inspiration, you could have a really fun time and then be expressing more of that in your life on earth and with mars too it's like how can i you know being motivated to create more of those kinds of experiences and interactions here jupiter with all max star and andromeda constellation a lot of andromeda support here you can see that very clearly so you know journeying to andromeda connecting with andromeda beings very supported very available this lunar eclipse Almach beings being, at least the enlightened Almach beings that I've connected with, very, very wise beings, a lot of wisdom. Jupiter already is a very wise planet, so we have an opportunity here to expand our consciousness to more of the wisdom of our true nature, true nature of reality. And this can also be helping us ground to the earth, be in right relationship to the earth, in harmony with the earth because the Almach beings were very much in harmony with their planets as well. Neptune opposite supergalactic center, so doubling that supergalactic center, what is a black hole energy, 
please explore this and connect with this in whatever way you feel guided to do so. Pluto in alignment with Altair Star in Aquila Constellation, bringing the boldness, bringing the courage, bringing the higher perspective, bringing the divine flight, being able to go and see that 360 view of how everything, the higher order of events to the higher order of your life, of what's happening on the earth, what's happening at all scales. So being able to fly and rise above and have that higher level order, that higher level view. This is also making me think of like traveling to the highest heavens of consciousness and having that like, whoa, now I can see the order of things. I couldn't see it when I was down in first heaven of consciousness or in 3D, 4D, Right, but now it's all expanded out, 11th heaven of consciousness, 12th heaven of consciousness, you know, higher dimensions of consciousness can really see the sacred order, the sacred geometry, the sacred intricacy of the complexity of the order that connects everything and how, you know, you're a part of that too. Chiron with Tau Ceti star and Cetus constellation are flying whale friends. These are also helping us be in the divine flow. These beings, enlightened Tau Ceti beings, Piscis Austrinus Fomohal is also about divine flows. Atranar Eridan is also about divine flows. So there really is, I mean, even the black holes, how they work is divine flow. <laughs> so we have very strong signatures within the galactic charts here of the divine flow of source creation and your alignment and your influence through your visualization, your manifestation, your co-creations with the divine flow, how you can influence that flow of consciousness that has become self-aware and is knowing itself and expressing itself. Venus, the ruler of the Libra lunar eclipse, is circled down here in the chart so you can see her and she is in conjunct alignment with Atranar star in Eridanus constellation and you can see a couple different pictures here Eridanus constellation this is the river of life the river of peace I call it the starry river of life and it comes through in my Reiki journeys as the river of life that we cross over into the higher heavens of consciousness. There's another picture here of Eridanus constellation. It's huge. You know, it takes up a lot of zodiacal degrees and crosses many different of the zodiac signs. Atranar star is connected to the elven beings. I imagine beings kind of like Galandriel and Lord of the Rings. Very beautiful. It's so funny, too, that Eridanus starseeds I interact with often have this kind of look of just like, like this purity and this radiance and this kind of like elf vibe to them. So it's very interesting how that manifests physically, even in human bodies as well. It's this frequency of having the the light that illuminates the deepest darkness in any and all circumstances. I imagine Eridanus worlds much like the elven worlds that are so ornate and intricate and created in complete perfect harmony with their planet, with their elements. So being masters with the elements, being masters with their creativity and beauty and the aesthetics. You know, what we would call like man-made creations on their world are just so beautifully in flow, in frame, on point, in tone, in match, in resonance with the more natural environment. So their creations are so much like like organic, pristine, even if it's not really based on an organic, you know, at the chemical level, but like very, very pristine 
natural, creative environments here. This constellation in this star is linked to rapid changes. And you can see I included here Bernadette Brady's interpretation of Atronar with Venus. So to experience turbulence in relationships, to like change in one's personal or domestic life, events which offend or challenge social values here. So there's this big influx of change within the divine feminine structure, the divine feminine function, change within relationships already, right? This is a Libra lunar eclipse. So we know it's about change in relationships. And Venus's alignment to Atronar is echoing that theme of changes also in our worth, right? Venus is about self-worth, what we value, our values, valuing ourself, valuing our connection to the oneness. Also, Venus is in Pisces, valuing our spiritual connection like never before, and maybe perhaps finding that inner stability that the Sabian symbol of the sun was talking about right through our connection, our spiritual connection through our self-love, valuing ourselves, trusting ourselves completely and fully. So, you know, if this is bumpy relationally, those bumps or those changes are all in the service of greater liberation and freedom. And I say this because of a couple things. Two freedom cards came out when I did my regular morning card pool today. And it was a freedom card from the Galactic Heritage deck and a freedom card from the Angels of Atlantis deck. Okay, two freedom cards. I also had two dreams last night that I finally wrote down. <laughs> I know last update I was talking about how I was having these powerful dreams, but not writing them down actually wrote them down and they both had to do with ships like vessels being on the water that could also fly okay and there was this element of escape with them and like leaving <laughs> okay and very very interesting all, all with like groups of people, groups of other beings that I trusted, like we were like escape parties, we were like, all leaving together. So there is this element of change that the change being into like a next level of liberation. This is even making me think, okay, those of you who have seen Lord of the Rings, you know, when the elves leave Earth, and like they go to they were traveling or they were leaving middle earth i'm a tolkien fan but i'm not like a hardcore one <laughs> so some of you may be saying you're totally saying this wrong but in the movies there was the elves were leaving middle earth when like the wars the battles were getting really bad right and they were going like to their enlightened kind of elven realms, right? I mean, some kind of heavenly realm, transcendent realms here. A similar energy here, okay? <laughs> oh my goodness. Another association with Atronar Star is the great resets and the cataclysms, the climatic changes, the big floods, the big fires that reset civilizations. And this has come through in so many different journeys of souls connected to this constellation, having witnessed, either been in the midst of those transitions or orchestrating them from a higher level and a higher perspective here. So letting go of guilt and responsibility and also healing those coordinates in space time, right? I've seen the Reiki energy healing those timelines again and again and again. And so maybe that's part of what was coming through in the dreams was one of those healed timelines of the Eridanus energy on earth or on other planets where there was time, there was enough planning to be able to evacuate, to leave, to go to those heavens of consciousness, the higher realm. So very interesting energy here. I'm, I'm putting out a lot of different possibilities. And with this, you know, you take what resonates, 
leave the rest. I think one thing we can take away here is the element of liberation, of freedom, of cleansing, purification, and divine flow and shining the bright light even in the darkest darkness. That's where I'm going to leave this. A couple different galactic heritage cards about this eclipse. So the first one is hive mind insectoid parallel. And this I think is coming into more of that group consciousness coherence with the groups that you're resonant with, right? So we're connected to all the information sets within the universe, within all universes, within all realities. So knowing that you are connected to all that information, realizing that the power of that, the profound gift and blessing of that and working with that skillfully, right? Refining that superpower and blessing the potential of that expressing for your highest good and the highest good of all. This missing link card is also talking about past timelines of the earth. These were genetic projects and, gen and relationships between earth humans and extraterrestrial beings. In this card, there's a sense of searching and seeking in this card and realizing that anything that you're searching for or seeking outside of yourself, which can be a shadow expression of Libra who's needing an other, right, is contained within you because you're connected to all the information, all the light contained within the universe, contained within all the universes, contained within all of creation. It's all available inside you. So there is no missing link outside of yourself. It is contained inside you. Be open, listen, Venus, and receive. Pisces. So I hope you found this exploration helpful and valuable. If you'd like to connect more, I would love to connect more. TaylorNorrisReiki.com. Learn about my classes, Reiki classes, astrology classes, new moon distant Reiki share every new moon, and a variety of astrology readings that I offer most joyously and passionately. Thank you so much for being there, for being you. I feel your love. I feel your love and it, it lights me up. So thank you so much. I receive your love with such gratitude and such humility. Happy and blessed Libra Lunar Eclipse to you. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.